Good evening folks, this is Tom Herbert from The Useful Coach and the reason I'm doing this video is that last night at uh, the Arch Climbing Wall I had three people come up to me uh, at different times asking me whether I knew anything about helping them with pain on the inside of the elbow. Now this is fairly common in climbing um, and it's generally referred to as epicondylitis or medial epicondylitis um, and this little knob here on your elbow or so not on your elbow but basically coming off here is called the epicondyle and what the theory is is that it's an overuse injury um, of the tendon right so that's coming off the epicondyle into the muscle belly or the forearm now there's a lot of uh, discussion about it about what causes it but I'm not going to go into that the easiest thing is though is that you can think of it as an overuse uh, injury caused by uh, just a lot of pulling right um, and my theory really is the fact that the forearm musculature is uh, getting stronger uh, than the tendon and it's also being chronically tight um, just from pulling the whole time and the reason that this can hurt so much and take almost forever to heal, I believe, is because it never gets any slack. Um, and I think what's happening is that basically the forearm musculature really is never relaxing well enough to allow this tendon uh, to relax. And so it's constantly shearing or constantly being pulled. Um, and one of the reasons I think that is the case is that you can get... Um, bands that you actually place around your forearm and they're quite tight and what it does is it actually takes the pain off the off the elbow because what happens is it changes the um, the insertion point so what happens is that the muscle then comes in and stops at that point where the band is and so what it does is it actually uh, gives this tendon here or this little knob uh, where it inserts on the on the elbow uh, a rest. The problem is, is it makes no difference in terms of healing. I really don't uh, um, see it making that much of a change. Um, it, what it does, it helps you get on with your life. Um, and I'm actually speaking from experience. So a couple of years back, um, I used to do a lot of uh, pull-up work in the park. There's a kind of a, a gym park thing uh, around the corner from here. And I was doing loads of different sets of different pull-ups and at one point, uh, I just did so much that I got it in my elbow and it took six months to heal. And this is why I'm telling you this video, um, is because I found a way of fixing it. Now, if you do some research online, especially YouTube, you'll see different people doing various exercises. Um, the most common or the most famous one um, is a, I think he may be a Swedish guy or a German guy. Um, he has a weight where he's doing eccentric uh, turns with the weight. Now this can be very good and it's very effective and it gave me uh, some relief but the reason I'm doing the video is that there's two things which I think uh, are the most important things or the most uh, useful things in terms of actually fixing it and I, and I do mean by fixing it. Um, one is pre preventative and the second is um, how you're actually going to sort it out in the first place. So, again, my theory is, is that the reason it takes so long to heal is that you're never giving this tendon unit, tendon muscle unit, any time to actually heal. It's constantly under tension and constantly pulling and constantly fraying. So, what I found is that even people who are doing very, you know, very long static stretches, they never actually get enough stretch to cause a change in this. Um, and two, tendons, uh, and especially the tendons coming into muscle, um, uh, really only respond to loading um, in terms of strength. This is why when you're doing fingerboard work, you have to constantly uh, increase the weight that you're loading on your tendons um, because th that's how they adapt. They're incredibly strong tissues, so just merely um, stretching or doing things is not going to be enough. So I'm going to show you the first thing which is what I think is the treatment for it and then I'm going to explain um, which should make sense how you prevent it. So the first thing and trust me on this is 
and for you to grab a decent weight. So, what I've got here, if there's enough space, okay, just, I've got a kettlebell here and it's about 16 kilos. The reason I'm choosing such a heavy kettlebell is that you're going to be doing slow eccentric movements. And what you're forcing to happen is that you're stretching the muscle and the tendon under load, okay? The main thing you've got to not do is you need to stop doing a concentric, a concentric contraction the whole time. This movement on the wall is what's caused it in the first place. You're doing so much of this that the muscle is shortening. And from the overuse, you're never getting a chance to heal that tendon. So here's the first thing I want you to do. I want you to take a weight that you can lower under control quite slowly, but it should be tough. So you're looking at probably from about 10 kilos up to about 16 kilos, right? What I want you to do is I want you to pick the weight up with the other hand, and you're going to be holding the weight here. And from here, you're very slowly, under load, going to be lengthening the muscle and also pulling on that tendon unit. Now once you get to the bottom, this is the important bit. I want you to lock the elbow out and just hold it there so you're getting that stretch. And the second important thing is to not pick it back up again with that arm. Get the other hand underneath and use the other hand to bring it up. Get in the place again and very, very slowly under control, let it stretch. Now this is probably going to hurt a little bit on the epicondyle, but, but go with it. And again, come up and slowly release it down and feel that stretch on that area. It should become quite warm, okay? You can do probably three sets of five. There's no magic number to this, um, but you want enough volume to try and get some change in the tissue. And you're not gonna get change in the tissue unless you have an adequate weight. I'm telling you, no matter how much you stretch, which is not a bad thing to do, right? You can do stretches after you're climbing. Do do that. Um, but you're not going to get enough tension to actually cause a tissue change uh, or, or get the fibers to relax. So the next thing I want to do is to explain how to prevent it. And to how to prevent it is to climb down. And I really mean climb down. So during your climbing session, like a third of the time on the wall should be climbing down. So what I mean is the same way we have with the, with the kettlebell, where we're doing more of an eccentric movement rather than, than a concentric movement, think about that how you can do it on the wall and do it before you climb and afterwards. So obviously I have no wall to demonstrate, but what, I, what, what, what you want to be doing is as you're climbing up, come into a lock-off position, right, on whatever you're doing. Now obviously it varies, and this is part of your warm-up training, right? Before you actually start climbing hard. And as you get, as you finish your climb, rather than jumping and launching yourself back off, climb down the wall, but lower yourself slowly, right? So as you're climbing, lower yourself slowly off that arm that you're trying to trying to stretch out. And what you're going to do is you're going to prevent this chronic tightness of the forearm muscles. Um, the other thing you're going to be doing, which is essential to your training and strength, is to be doing eccentric training for your muscles. Right? You, you, you want to do this, and I'll do a whole other video on, on the importance of eccentric training. But the two things I want you, you to take away. One, the way that you're going to fix this issue with your elbow is by doing slow eccentric loaded stretches. And if you do it every day, three, three sets of five, or two sets of six, or something like that, choose a number that you can repeat and keep working on that. Um, and the second thing is, 
um, to do this after you're climbing um, and to warm up before you're climbing with eccentric stuff. So climb up your easy routes and la lower yourself down, right? And uh, when you finish your climbing, do the same thing. So finish, if you're struggling with this sort of pain, right? Once you've finished your climbing session, cool down by doing that. Climb up as much as you can with the good arm and your feet, right? And then once you get to the top, just lower yourself down off the arm. See if you can try and do as much work as you can in the eccentric movements at full stretch. So I want you to really hang down and get that, that elbow locked out so you get a full stretch there. Um, do as much as you can at the end of your session, including your normal stretching, um, and it should make a really big difference. So, again, uh, this is a, uh, a quick uh, way to, to deal with medial epicondylitis. Um, thanks.